In this video, I'm going to talk about the three main ways that we can create and track masks. So let's bring our footage into After Effects and drag it down to this icon to create a composition from our footage. Now we are going to select it and click on the pen tool. If our clip isn't selected when we use a pen tool, it is going to create a shape layer instead of a mask. Use the pen tool to draw around your subject. If we wanted to, we could use any of these shapes to do the same thing. When drawing with the pen tool, if we click and hold when we add a point, when we move our mouse, it will actually make the line circular. A great way to practice this is by using a website called the Bezier Game. It allows you to play a game that will increase your drawing skills. I will leave a link in the description. So we can click on a point to move it, or click on a line to add more points. Once our mask is drawn, there is a couple of ways that we can view it. You'll notice that the default is the mask surrounded by a black background. Go over to the drop down beside our clip, and then mask. You can then change the view to subtract or none. I like to use none so I can see both the mask and the background, but I do like to switch between views. Now if we want this mask to move with our object, we are going to have to track it. So let's go back over here to our mask, select it, right click, and hit track mask. Then go over here to our tracker window. If it doesn't pop up, go up to window and select tracker. Under the method dropdown, select the option that makes sense for you. I chose position, scale, and rotation for this clip because it made sense, but you might only need position or scale, or you might just want rotation. Then click the play button above to analyze the footage. This will take a while, so be patient. In this clip, you can see that the mask tracks until he moves his head and the shape of our subject changes. In this case, the auto track won't change the shape of our mask, just how it moves. If we select face tracking instead, the mask will change shape as his face turns. However, this will only track his face and not everything else we had selected. This feature is great if you're trying to blur out a face, but not if you're trying to track a whole person. So let's try to track some other masks and see how the tracker holds up. When we create a mask around the lips, we can see that the tracker does a great job of moving the mask as the lips move. It only falls off when this can obstructs the view. In this clip, the mask holds really well until the tracker catches the sand and starts tracking that instead. When I make the mask tighter, it holds on for a bit longer before falling off. I think this is because the horse and the sand in the mask are moving in opposite directions. Everything in this mask is moving in the same direction. When I put the mask very tight on the horse, the mask still falls off, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. It may still be catching some sand. Not every clip is going to work with this tracker. However, at the very least, it can give you a base to start with. For example, in the horse clip, the mask did track for a bit. This will save us some time. If we hit the drop down beside mask, we can see all of these keyframes under mask path. If we zoom in, we can go through frame by frame and adjust the mask if need be. You can also use the page up and page down on your keyboard to go forward and back one frame. If we can't use our auto tracker or it just didn't work, we can manually track our mask. To do this, click on the drop down beside our mask and hit the stopwatch icon beside mask path. This will allow us to create keyframes and move our mask. We can increase the scale of our timeline and go through frame by frame with our mouse or use the page up and page down keys. Adjust and move your mask as needed. To adjust your mask, you can select the mask, click onto the pen tool, and then onto a point to move it. If we want to add an additional point, we can click anywhere on our lines. We can select all of our points by clicking the selection tool and dragging over all of our points. This will allow us to move our mask as one. If we click off to deselect our points, we can click on a line to move the whole line or on a single point to move just that point. Once we adjust our mask at a new point in our clip, a keyframe will be added under mask path automatically. We can also add a keyframe on our own by clicking this keyframe icon to the left of mask path. A reason why you might want to create your own keyframe would be if your object stays within the mask for many keyframes before you have to adjust it again. If you don't add your own keyframe before you move the mask, the mask is going to move in between keyframes. This could be good or bad depending on the scenario. Adding a new keyframe before the new movement will prevent this from happening. You'll notice under mask that we also have the option for mask feather and mask expansion. Mask feather will make your lines less rigid if you're trying to fade into something. And the mask expansion tool will make your mask larger or smaller. You can also add keyframes to these effects so that they change throughout your clip. Another way to create a mask and track it is through rotoscoping. Rotoscoping works great if you're looking to make a mask that is tight on your subject. It also helps if your subject has contrast from your background. So let's double click on our video layer. This will pull the clip layer up in a new window. 
This will allow us just to work on this layer. Select the rotor brush icon up here in your toolbar. This will give you this green brush. To make the brush bigger or smaller, hold the control key on Windows, command on Mac, and drag your mouse up or down to increase or decrease the size of your brush. Now we are going to paint through our subject. You can see that it has started to select the outer layer of our subject. We are going to keep doing this. Be sure to paint through your subject and not around it as this yields better results. It is also much faster. If the tool selects too much, you can hold the Alt key and paint through what you would like to deselect. To zoom in on your subject, you can use the wheel on your mouse and hold the space bar to move around the frame. We are going to move around our clip and do some touch-ups. We're trying to be as accurate as possible because the more work we put into our initial mask, the less work we'll have to do down the road. The tighter our lines are on our subject, the better the rotoscoping tool will work. Once you are happy with how this looks, we are going to track our mask. Hit the spacebar and After Effects will analyze the frames. Once it's done, let's bring our playhead to the beginning of our clip. Now we're going to zoom in and go through it frame by frame, just making sure that the rotoscope tool did a good job and making adjustments as we need to. Once we are done with this, we are going to close out of our video layer and go back to our composition. You can see that the background is gone through our whole clip. If you want to reverse this so you can only see the background, click the drop down on your video clip, Effects, Roto Brush, and then scroll down to Invert. Turn this on and now we can add effects just to our background. So let's add a blur to our background. Drop another copy of our original video on the timeline, add the Gaussian blur effect to our top layer, and now we have a blurred background behind our subject. Reverse this back so our subject is the rotoscope, turn off the blur, add some text between our layers, and now we have another really cool effect. There is so much that you can do with masks, and I hope this video helped you understand how you can do this in After Effects. If this video helped you, please give it a like. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.